Number two, shut the door behind you. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, 6, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees a secret will reward you. We're talking about a secret place. Jesus says, shut the door behind you. I want to encourage you to begin to develop your personal private prayer because without prayer your life will be empty and your life will be dry. Jesus prayed when he was on earth. Somebody said why do you guys pray so much? It is done already. It's finished on the cross. You know you already have everything that you need to have. Why so much praying? Morning prayers, Friday uh, Friday prayers, uh, night, night vigil prayers. You guys pray and pray and fast. It's already done. You don't need to do so much. You don't need to strive so hard. It's already done. Yes, positionally in Christ, it's finished on the cross. But practically, we have to transform, transport, I mean, the things that's already been done in heavenly realms down to earth so they manifest it physically in our life. If by this theory we go, then why did Jesus have to pray so much? Bible says he spent mornings in prayer. Bible says he spent nights in prayer. And Bible says he prayed in public. If Jesus being son of God, having full revelation of his authority, knowing who he is, trust me, he wasn't struggling with identity. He knew exactly. Having full power of heaven invested in him, yet he still prayed, you gotta pray. I gotta pray. We gotta pray as a church. I encourage you, when you go back home, begin to pray. Spend much time in prayer. If you're a pastor, if you're a leader in here, and you're going back to your church, begin to pray yourself. Begin to encourage your church to pray. The more you pray, the more you're going to see move of God in your life. The more you pray, the more you're going to see angels of God move on your behalf. Do you think that these testimonies today that you see, that when we were praying, laying hands on people and they recovered, demons were coming out, do you think it's an accident? It's because there was much time spent in prayer in the presence of God and you were filled with the glory of God so that when you come out and you lay your hands, demons can't stand the light that's inside of you in Jesus' mighty name. When you lay your hands on the sick, they recover because the glory of God is in you too much in Jesus' mighty name. Prayer gives license to the Holy Spirit and gives license to the angels of God to operate in this in the earthly realm. Bible says that God has given the earth to the sons of men. But the sons of men through Adam and Eve they surrendered it. They surrendered it to the kingdom of darkness. And so therefore our prayer is like a visa and a passport that we send over to the heavenly realms that allows angels to come and operate on our behalf. In the book of Daniel it's clearly demonstrated. Bible angel came and he said that the first day you prayed your prayer was answered. But I encountered some forces on the way. I encountered some some strongholds. I encountered some princes and, and principalities of air that I had to fight through. And thank God you didn't stop praying because because of your prayer I received support from heaven and I was able to come and bring you that answer. That's why we pray church. That's why we have to pray much. That's why we have to pray more. That's why we have to abide in God. The more we pray, the more we fast, the more we commit ourselves to God, the more we consecrate ourselves to God, the more God will be able to do through us and in us. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Touch your neighbor. See, uh, tell him be a prayer. Be prayerful. Prayer demonstrates dependency on God and our trust in Him. Bible says, trust on the Lord with all your heart. Lead not, lead not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways and He will direct your path. In Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 17, Apostle Paul encourages us. He says, pray without ceasing. Couple things that prayer does. Prayer helps you to avoid temptation. In Matthew chapter 26, Jesus says, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Do you find yourself struggling with temptation? 
with lust, with uh, different kinds of thoughts, different negative thoughts, uh, tempted with all kinds of things, and, and you can't seem to break out of it, maybe because there is lack of prayer in your life. Maybe you need to go on your knees, you go into a secret closet and begin to consecrate yourself to God, begin to meditate on the Word of God, begin to pray and Bible says when you pray you will avoid temptation. Prayer is a place where we unload our burdens. Our generation, especially the millennial generation, they got in these tendencies to unload the burdens on social media. Instagram, Facebook, they, be, they, they feel like the Lord listens to them more when they post it and describe the things that they're going through on their social media. But the Bible calls us to go in their secret closet. I believe that if we, come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. I believe that if we spend more time behind the shut doors praying to God and pouring out our heart and relieve our burdens there, the less things will be posted on social media regarding our struggles and problems. <clears throat> Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, Jesus said. Prayer, Jesus said, seek, knock, ask, seek and knock and it will be given to you. And so I want to encourage you today, pray. Pray without ceasing. See God. Pray that God will fill you with His Spirit. Be continuously filled with God in your, in your secret place. And you will see that your situation will, will change. You will see your family will change. You will see your business will change. You will see that, that uh, inside of you things will be different. Apostle Paul says to Timothy, fight according to your prophecies. I know there's some people that are misguided about prophecies. They're misguided about uh, the words that were spoken over their life. And as we were praying these last two prayer lines, we were also releasing word of knowledge and word of prophecy. Some of you received some prophetic words into your life. I want you to not just relax and say, well, the man of God said it, it's going to happen. The man of God said, I'm going to be prosperous in a business. So I'm just going to eat chips, say, sit on a couch, watch Netflix, and God's going to give me business. That's not the way it works. Fight according to your prophecies. Start a business, begin to go out there, work hard and God will give you that breakthrough. If God has promised a restoration in your family, oh man of God said it, it settles it, that's it, it's done. No, begin to work on your marriage, begin to listen to the podcast, begin to listen to the books, go to the counseling, surround yourself with the godly people, begin to work out your prophecies in your life. Begin to pray them out. Begin to fight in the spiritual realm against the powers and principalities and darkness that are blocking the presence of God. They are blocking that prosperity in your life. They are blocking that peace and harmony in your marriage. They are blocking your career path in Jesus' name. And I want to tell you something. The greater the prophecy over your life, the harder the battle will be in your life. The harder and the more you're going to have to pray and fast that that word of God comes through in your life. It's not that God fails. It's not that man of God is wrong. Sometimes they miss it. It's true. There's still man first of God second. Okay, there's still man. But I want to tell you what, whether you receive the prophecy or not, if you go in a secret place and in, in your closet and you pray it out, you will have what you pray for because that's what Jesus said. And that's the most true prophecy that we need.